Matthew 22 verse 14, For many are called but few are chosen. You may ask yourself, chosen for what specifically? If you see these signs in your life that we are going look at, it means God is counting on you to do something in your lifetime, and as a chosen one, your life might be filled with challenges right from the beginning, these difficulties serve as a purpose, they make you stronger and wiser as you navigate through hard times, you gain experience and understanding, so that you can be able to guide others who are going through their own struggles. Because if you don't go through struggles, challenges, difficulties, or lack something, when you will be doing well in life, you will fail to really understand what it means to lack, what it means to suffer or go through difficulty times in life. So if you see these signs, you should listen to the call, it's a sign for a higher power urging you to fulfill something while you are living on this earth, and when the call comes, just like Samuel, say, Lord, speak to me, I am listening, use me Lord the way it pleases you. Now where am I going to sleep this night? I wish I had money, God help me. What is it? Why are you crying? The landlord chased us out of the house, I don't know where I am going to sleep with my kids. Oh no, I'm sorry for that, how much is the rent? $35, but I have 3 months arrears, that's why he chased me out of the house. Take this money and pay rent and the arrears, you can't sleep outside and you have kids. Sir thank you so much, God bless you. You are welcome. We thank God. I have spent the money I was supposed to buy shoes for my wife. What will I tell her? She will be mad. She has reminded me a million times, but I will explain to her what happened. She will understand. Welcome home my husband, and did you buy the shoes? Let us sit, so that I can explain myself well. Okay, where are the shoes? A cleaner lady in our company was crying, so I asked her what was the problem. She said the landlord chased her out of the house. She had three months rent arrears, and she didn't have the money to pay, so the $150 I was supposed to buy the shoes, I gave it to her, she needed it the most, the shoes we will buy another day. What? So no shoes for me? I am sorry, we will buy next month, I couldn't just take it that woman will sleep outside and I could help. Don't you see people are always taking advantage of you, I am so tired of this behavior of yours. I'm going to make it up for you. So this Friday we will have a dinner date, what do you say? Really? Wow, I am happy. Yes, I will take you out, it has been a while since we went out to have dinner. I love dinner dates, I just wish today was a Friday. It's the day after tomorrow, I will send you the address of the hotel, then we will meet there after work, you will love it. I am waiting. I had a serious argument with my wife last night, she annoyed me very badly, I am not going to sleep in that house, I will spend the night at one of my apartments. Is it that serious? Yes, I want her to realize her mistake. Your wife is almost going to give birth, you need to be there for her. She has the house help, I don't think she needs me. Whatever problem you have, I pray you will sort it out, you don't have to sleep outside, she is still your wife. I can't wait for tonight. You have already started counting hours. Of course. Okay, let me now go to work. See you in the evening. Oh no, my water broke and my husband is not picking his phone. I know because of the argument we had he doesn't want to hear anything from me. I will call his friend Victor to come and take me to the hospital. I sent the house help to an errand and she is taking ages. Victor, please come to my house. It's an emergency. My water broke. Oh, hold on. I just left the office. I am on my way. Wow, my husband has a nice taste of hotels. Let me wait for him. Doctor, how is she? She is having complications and she can't deliver normally, so we will have to take her to theater. Please sign here. I am not the husband, but since it's a matter of life and death and the husband refused to come, let me sign for him. My husband said I meet him here by 7, it's already 8 and he is not here, I wonder where he is. Oh no, I forgot my phone and the car, 10 missed calls, I even forgot about the dinner date, let me rush. She is not picking my call, I hope she is still waiting for me. She is not here, she must have gone back home, 
I think she will be mad at me. I hope she will understand I had to take Hannah to the hospital. I don't want to hear any story from you. I don't want to hear even a word from you. Just leave me alone. One of the signs that you are a chosen one, you are a good and cheerful giver. If you love to give and attend other people's needs without expecting anything in return, it's a great sign you have been chosen, you always ready to contribute to the betterment of others. When you are bothered that you haven't been of help to someone after a long while, always praying to God to send someone to you who needs to be helped, tells a lot about you, it's a sign that you have been chosen by God to help other people out there. Just allow God to use you and in return he will bless you with abundance so that you can be a blessing to others. Today you are going to your new school, a good one. I am so excited. I hope the students in that school will like me. They will. You are such a bright student. Even the teachers will love you. I hope so. Good morning students. Today we have a new student. Arthur introduce yourself to the class. Good morning class. My name is Arthur. Welcome Arthur, come sit with me. Thank you. My name is Edward and you are welcome to our school. Thank you Edward. And why did you leave your previous school? I got a scholarship to come and study in this school. Wow, I love that. In that case we will be studying together. I heard the new student is very bright. We have a competition now. I guess we have to work extra hard for him not to defeat us. Defeat who? Maybe you are the one he is going to defeat but not me. No one can defeat me. I am the brightest among all. We will see that after doing the exams. How was your first day in school? It was great mom. That's good to hear. Now go and take your food so that you can sleep early. Okay mom. Students in that school are bright. The way everyone was answering the questions that I didn't know. I just feel like I am the dumbest. I will not allow myself to be embarrassed. I will double the way I used to study, so that I can perform well. You are not asleep until now. Yes mom, and by the way I need some revision books. Can you buy them for me? I will, but don't stay up until late. This school has a big library, I like it. Yes, it's a national school, so the library must be big. Studying here is quite amazing. I tell you. We have a test. So everyone close your books. Test. You didn't even tell us so that we can prepare. You should always be ready. How did you see the test? It wasn't that hard, but the teacher could have informed us earlier. Almost everything we have been revising for were in the test. I am sure we are going to pass the test. Let us just wait and see when the teacher will give us the results. You look pale. Are you okay? I am dying. Three months ago the doctor diagnosed me and found I had cancer. It was stage 4. The doctors told me I have 3 months to live, and the 3 months are almost over. Please when I die, take good care of my son. You are the only person I can trust. What? You are dying. Why did you keep such kind of information? We could have done something to help. It's too late. Now promise me, you will take good care of my son. I promise I will. And have you told mom about this? Yes, she knows, and I told her that after I die, you will take care of my son, you are my sister and I believe you won't harm my son. I promise I'll raise Arthur as though he was my own son. Thank you. How was school? School was good. We had a test and I'm hoping to get an A in that test. You will. Son, I want you to know that I love you so much and keep being a good boy, okay? I love you too mom, I will always be a good boy. That's good my son, I love you. You all did a good work, and the one who lead is Arthur our new student, with a clean of 91 points, have a blessed day. What? I can't believe this, today I didn't lead, I have only 80 points. We still have other exams. You work hard. Are you sure you didn't cheat on this exam? We know you came from a poor school that doesn't perform well as we do, so how can you lead with 91 points? I have never cheated in my exams, and I will never cheat. I worked hard to get those 91 points. I am watching you. Mom, 
am home. I passed the test and led the whole class. Mom, mom wake up, let me call an ambulance. I am so sorry, we lost her. No, no, I can't lose my mom, please doctor go wake my mom, tell my mom I need to tell her how I passed the test, I want to tell her I am the one who led in the test. I am sorry. It will be well, let us go to my house. John, from today we will be living with Arthur, he is now one of us, he will be now like your own brother. Yes mom. Arthur welcome. Who washed my car? I did uncle. You are such a good boy, and where is your cousin? He is playing outside. Anyway, for being a nice boy, take this money and buy yourself whatever you want. I wish John was like you, all he does is to play, eat and sleep. Hey. So you want your uncle to see that you are the good one? In fact give me that money, go to the kitchen and prepare lunch. Auntie, what did I do to you that you hate me like this? I said go and prepare lunch. Wow, you cooked this meal, you are a good cook. Thank you. You want to kill me with this food, eh? Is that your plan? I am sorry. Get out of my sight. Mom, you are being cruel to Arthur, I don't see anything wrong with the food he prepared. You are so dumb, ever since Arthur came here, your dad has been praising him, he gives him gifts and money, because he passes his exams well, but you always fail and never help around the house, and you are here comfortable. Another sign that you are chosen one, people will hate you for no reason, this can happen at your place of work, even your family members can hate you for no reason, and you haven't done them any wrong, even if you try to be good to them, they still hate you with no reason. All these happens because you are a chosen one, people are against you because they see your greatness and wish they had what you have, or their children could have what you have. Though people continue hating you for no reason, you shouldn't be troubled by their hate, because when you are a chosen one, these people will continue hating you, don't stress yourself because of their hate, all you have to do is be happy and be careful when around them, because when people hate you, they will want to harm you. Pray to God to always protect you from these people, because he has chosen you. My grandson, you came alone all this way here. Yes, Grandma. Come, have a seat. Thank you, Grandma. Why did you leave your auntie's place? Auntie doesn't like me, she beats me, gives me a lot of work and I don't get time to study. Your mother left you on her care, trusting she will treat you like her own son, but don't worry, you will now stay with me, go freshen up and come eat. I made it. I finally graduated. I'm now a doctor. I will not let people die because of cancer. I am proud of you my grandson. You have passed through a lot and you managed to achieve your goals. God has been with me. Our God is faithful. I am proud of you. I am going to get a good job and then we will get married. Just finish your degree first. I have only remained with a year then I graduate. Yes, I know you will finish well. So what are you planning to do? For now I am going to volunteer as wait for a job. I believe when the hospital will start hiring, I will be hired. You remember the organization I told you I was volunteering. They wanted to hire doctors and I got the job. Wow, that's great. I am happy for you. I am glad, I thank God, I am finally a doctor in this hospital. You always thank God in all your achievements since we were in high school. God didn't do this, you did it by yourself. You are wrong, I wouldn't have made it this far by my might, but God has helped me all through. I don't believe that. There is a higher being watching over us, we didn't just come to this world by ourselves. A supreme being must have created all these things that you are seeing, and that's God, even if I am a doctor, I would also love to be a preacher, something in me tells me to go into ministry as well, I want to be someone who can help people physically and spiritually, you we as doctors, we don't have any power to heal, the healing power comes from God, Christ is the great physician, imagine being a doctor and a preacher, or a doctor and you are a Christian too, how beautiful could that be, even when someone thinks you are the one who has healed him, you don't take the glory, but give God the glory because he just uses us to heal his people. Those are just stories, let's go back to work. Another sign you are a chosen one, you believe in a supreme power, 
There is a power calling you to be a light to the darkness of others, even when you do something, you don't want the glory to be given to you, you believe there is supreme power that was behind what you have done, so you want all the glory to be given to God, and you will never be alone, the supreme power of God is backing you up, go and fulfill the call of God for your life, you should rise and shine, let the people know there is supreme power behind the good things that happen to them in their lives, and they should give praises to God, and not man. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven, Matthew 5 verse 16. Our son is sick, we have to take him to the hospital. Let's wait until tomorrow morning, it's already late. Tomorrow no, he is hurting, I have never seen him like that before, I don't know what's the problem, so we have to go now. Okay then. This young doctor has been getting all the credit since he came to this hospital. Before he came, I was the one who was being given all the credit. But now all the attention is on him, I cannot let him get all the credit. I have to do something. Doctor, our son is sick, please check on him. Don't worry, we're going to do everything we can. How is he? We have done some tests and now we are waiting for the results. By tomorrow morning we will have them. Let's go home. You sleep and we will come back tomorrow. I can't go home and let my son stay alone in the hospital. I will sleep here. How is the patient doing? He is not that good but he will be fine. He is stable. An x-ray has been done on his stomach and I am waiting to see the report tomorrow. I am afraid the boy has a tumor in the stomach. He will be fine. Oh no. The boy is not breathing. He was fine last night. How could he have died? This can't happen. I don't believe this, there must be something wrong. What is it? The boy is dead. We are so sorry, we lost him. What are you saying? Don't tell me my son is dead, no, how can that happen? He was so young full of life. Oh no. I'm so sorry for your loss. Who are you? Do I know you? I am one of the doctors at St. John's Hospital, but I think your son could have been alive. The doctor in charge was incompetent in his work, maybe the doctor was tired and administered the wrong drug to your son, I don't believe that doctor, he must have done something wrong, you can do your investigation and find out the cause of your son's death. What? Yes, just do what I have told you, don't reveal that I am the one who gave you this information, I just wanted to help. You have been busy, how is work? I am just troubled. I feel sad a small boy died that I knew I was going to treat and be well, I always pray for my patients. It's sad. So sad. It will be well. Now apart from work, I want to take you somewhere. Where? Let's go, you will find out. This is the place we met, it brings me good memories. It's three years now, Layla, will you marry me? Yes yes, I will marry you Arthur. We will start the wedding preparation in a few months. What does the post-mortem result say? Your son didn't die a natural death. The doctor administered the wrong drug to him. What? So it's true, I am going to sue the doctor and the hospital for killing my son. Sir, this letter is for you. Okay. My hospital is being sued for having incompetent doctor. Is this some kind of a joke? I received a letter this morning. Someone has sued this hospital and they claim that a child died in the hands of a doctor who administered the wrong drug. I will not allow my hospital to go down because of one man's incompetence. When I find to know the doctor behind this, he will face the law. His license must be revoked. Such doctors shouldn't be allowed to practice in this hospital. We are dealing with people's lives and not animals. I wonder who that doctor is? He is in a hot soup. I guess there must be a mistake somewhere. Something like that has never happened, all the doctors here are well trained. You are right. You killed an innocent child, you have a right to remain silent, and whatever you say can be used against you in the court of law. I am in police custody, how can this happen and I am innocent? I never administered the wrong drug to that child, God you know me, I never did what they are saying, I have depended on you in everything that I do. I know this is the enemy, he is behind all these, but what else can I say? It is not that you are not aware that your child is in this hard time, it is not that it has caught you unaware or in surprise. You knew I will be in police custody this very day, 
When you blessed me with a big job in that hospital, I gave you praises. Now why should I not give you praises? I will praise your name Lord. Am I the first one to go through this? No I'm not. Your servant Paul, Joseph, went to prison. Does it mean you were not with them? You were right there with them, for I know, you are as well with me in this. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now I thank you Lord that I am in this cell. The court has heard your case. This court finds you guilty and therefore you are going to spend five years behind bars and your medical license has been revoked. You will never practice as a medical doctor. Oh no. I thought your God was going to help you. Shadrach, Mshat and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Daniel 3 verse 16 to 18. I know my God has not forsaken me, he knows I am going through this and I have been imprisoned, I know his heart is touched. You still believe your God will deliver you and you are going to spend five years in prison. One day we will understand why all this is happening. I know my Redeemer liveth. If your God delivers you, I will believe he is a true God. I succeeded getting rid of him for good, now I will be the one all the credit will be given. This court finds by clear and convincing evidence that the offense for which Mr. Arthur was convicted, sentenced and imprisoned was not committed by Mr. Arthur, but committed by his fellow colleague doctor, Mr. Jack. Mr. Jack is therefore sentenced to 30 years in prison with no possibility of him ever to practice as a medical doctor. Any involvement of him with anything related to medical after serving the sentence of 30 years will lead to a life sentence in prison. Mr. Arthur is now eligible for up to $550,000 in compensation from the state for a wrongful conviction, and his medical license revocation has been withdrawn. You are now a free man. No one could tell Mr. Jack was the one behind killing that child. Indeed you serve a true God. I have accepted him in my life. Now I believe in him. Amen. We give God all the glory. You are one of the souls that have been saved. Now I understand why I went to prison for a whole year. While in prison, I met people who had lost hope in life. They stopped trusting in God and never wanted to hear anything to do with God. It has taken me one year to bring them to Christ. Now they believe in Christ. They accepted the sins they committed and repented. Some of them are now preaching to others in prison and promised the day they will come out of prison, they will continue doing the work of God. Indeed as you said that one day we will understand why all happened, now we understand. Maybe if you couldn't have gone to prison, I could never have believed in God. He is a God of wonders and full of miracles. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. Psalm 77 verse 14. Another sign you are chosen one, is when you face major hardships while you are innocent. Most of the challenges you face are to build you and prepare you for greater things ahead. Like Joseph in the Bible, he was sold, went to prison and then became a governor and saved Egypt from hunger. We can also see that Arthur went to prison because God wanted him to go and give hope to others in prison, to bring those souls that had lost hope to God. You should know that in the world of darkness, when Arthur who trusted in God went to prison, they rejoiced not knowing it will come to their very defeat. The enemy laughs when he sees the children of God are facing challenges, crisis, difficulties in life, not knowing God will turn their situations around. Sometimes God withholds your blessing because there is a witch around you, because he knows if he blesses you now before you are prepared to receive what he has in store for you, you will start having pride and the witch might end up bewitching you. Remember God hates pride, so God has to prepare you so that when even the witch will attack, you know how to defeat the enemy in the spiritual realm. This is to remind you that there is something ahead that God has predestined for you, for you to get there and be able to stand. God sometimes has to make you go through tough moments so as to prepare you. I made it. I wish mom and dad were alive so they can celebrate my achievements. Since I came to this orphanage, you have been like a mother to me. I am so proud of you. I remember the way you used to be sad when you came. You saw it was an end to you when your parents left you. But with the hope in Christ, you stood on your feet. 
trusted that God has something for you in this life, now look at you, you have a graduated as a pilot, this is to show, if you did it everyone can do it, though you face challenges, you have managed to come out victorious. Indeed God never left me, I thought when my parents died, God abandoned me, I saw no future in me, but God never left me. He is a loving father to his children. Welcome Talia to the TV show, our youngest pilot, your story has inspired a lot of ladies out there, please tell us briefly about it. I am glad it has, the sky is the limit, I lost my parents in a car accident while I was still young, I went to an orphanage and that's where I was raised up, went to a public school, I worked hard and got a scholarship to go study in South Africa, I did my course and after finishing, I am now here, the youngest female pilot, I want to encourage someone out there who want to give up on their dreams, that you should keep pushing, even if you fail hundred times, get up, dust yourself and continue with the journey, there is no human being that succeeded without first failing. Just keep going, by God on your side, eventually you will make it, don't give up despite the many challenges and struggles that you are going through, you are not a failure, you will be a failure if you give up. I leave you with this, Sometimes it can take you even 10 years, to get that one year that will change your life. Let me say it again, sometimes it can take you even 10 years, to get that one year that will change your life. Talia is a strong lady, despite everything she went through, she has managed to make it, I want to be like her. Me too, I want to be a pilot when I grow up. Another sign you are chosen one, you are a beacon for others, a beacon meaning you are a source of light and inspiration. Life is full of both roses and thorns, when you embrace some difficulties in life and can stand the test, it will make you to have an experience that can help others. People are able to see a successful path that you have created in which they can follow. When there are people who look up to you, people who get inspired by your life, you are a shoulder that someone can lean on, just know you have been chosen by God to bring joy to the life of others. Isaiah 61 verse 1 the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Well, this holiday my husband took me to Dubai, and we enjoyed our holiday there. What about you? I was just at home. Can we see the pictures you took while in Dubai? I didn't take any photos. You know I love to play low-key. Why do you always like lying? I know you well. If you went to Dubai you could have flooded the internet with your photos. You can't lie to us. I am detecting hate from you. Anyway did you get a chance to climb the tallest building? It was so fun when I went to Dubai. I remember while we were on top of that building, when you look down and see how people, vehicles, and everything are so small, you see yourself as the only big person. Do you know the other building next to it? Ah. You see, you don't have anything to say, just stop coping other people, just be yourself, this is not you, you are living a fake life. I want to be like this socialite, look how she is beautiful, everyone likes her, I am saving for BBL. My dear you look beautiful just the way you are, why do you want to go for surgery, you might even die in the process. That's what I want, I don't feel good with this body, I am not satisfied with it. I want a perfect body, I want more. Instead of surgery, why don't you work out, it's a healthy option, look at me, I don't have the body like the one you want to have, I do work out, I love the way I am, I don't need to have the body like the one that is stressing you to have, I am satisfied with the way God created me. It's better you work out to have the body you want instead of doing surgery. Working out is stressful and it will take years to get the body I want. I want what will give me an instant body. I have tried to warn you, but it's like you have blocked your ears, I have said my own. They say fake it until you make it, I will live fake until I make it. Another sign you are chosen one is you love to be yourself, you are not fake and so you hate a fake life, and also you don't support people living a fake life, being yourself makes you unique and special and it turns you into the very best version of yourself.